Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Dapper Dividends. I'm Russ. If you haven't been around these parts yet, I'd like to encourage you to just do me a quick favor. Help a naval veteran out and hit that subscribe button. We thank you. And actually, I might not. Hat on, hat off. How about hat off? I was going to wear the hat, but I'm not going to now because, 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 because of the wonderful things he does. Oh, we're off to see the wizard. <laughs> Let's have some fun and look at some companies going ex-dividend. How's that for energy for you? So really quickly, all that you can use this for is to buy more of a company that you already hold, or you can also use it to initiate a position into a company. All you need to know about the ex-dividend date is that you cannot buy it on the X date. So I'm gonna show you some screenshots from dividend.com and you will see the X date. Do not buy on the X date, it's too late. You have to buy the day before. So the earlier, the better. And just keep that in mind that you can't buy on the X date and now you know. So without further ado and no more singing, let's look at some companies. I've got 12 of them for you, by the way. I used a couple criteria to pick them out, to weed them out for you. <laughs> they have to be small, mid, and large cap. No micros in there. Uh, we like to fit in some small cap because they have a lot more room to grow than some of the big caps, but the big caps will pay more of a dividend. So there's always a yin and yang and a balance and a trade-off there. They had to have a five-year compound annual growth rate of at least 4% and yielding over 2%. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not some fantastic companies paying uh, under 2%. Obviously, Apple is under 1%, but if you're looking for uh, that income, then we're going to look a little higher, and I know some of my dividend buddies like to have at least 2.5%, but we're going to lower the bar to 2%. And without further ado, now let's get into it. Our first company up is Cisco Systems, ticker CSCO. Their next ex-dividend date is April 5th, 2021, paying 37 cents a share, which is a 2.8% increase from 36 cents. That is a forward yield of 2.82%. They have been paying and increasing that dividend for seven years with a 45% payout ratio. Next is one that everybody knows, JP Morgan Chase, ticker JPM, paying 90 cents a share for a forward yield of 2.36% going X on April 5th. And they have been paying that dividend of increasing it, it says, for one year. Now, I haven't checked the consecutive years of increases, but we'll just go with it. What matters is that the yield is only 33%, super low, and plenty of room to grow from there. Next up, with a big old fat increase of 137.8%, Darden Restaurants, ticker DRI. They hiked that dividend from 37 cents to 88 cents. They're going X on April 8th. And that forward yield is 2.45% with a payout ratio of 89%. Now I did double check that. According to the trailing 12 months on Yahoo Finance, it is only 33% of the free cash flow. Moving on along is General Dynamics, ticker GD one of the companies I hold in my self-directed IRA. They gave an 8.2% hike from $1.10 to $1.19, going X also on April 8th for a forward yield of 2.60%, payout ratio of 42.99%, and 30 years of consecutive dividend increases. They are a dividend aristocrat, according to dividend.com. Now this next one is ticker NTAP, NetApp Incorporated. They show on dividend.com, they had a suspended dividend, but when I look at nasdaq.com, they show that the X date is April 8th, paying 48 cents a share with a 2.65% dividend yield. Looking really good at a technology company, NetApp. And wrapping up April 8th is the REIT company, UDR Incorporated, paying 36 and a quarter cents a share, which is a 0.7% hike from 36 cents, 3.27% forward yield, a whopping 3,900% payout ratio, but you can't look at that for REITs. REITs, you wanna go 
AFFO, there's a different metric. You can't use earnings per share because they have to pay out 90% of their dividend by law in order to maintain that REIT status. So when I did look at it, it's a little high, but at least for free cash flow, it's 98%. So it's it's under that 100%. Their dividend is safe. They've been increasing that for 11 years. This is one that my main man, Ian Lopuk, loves is Hormel Foods, ticker HRL, going X on April 9th. 24 and a half cents a share with a 2.01% forward yield just squeaked by that minimum bar of 2% I sent with a 56% payout ratio and a whopping 53 years of dividend increases. They are a dividend king. Lincoln National Corp, the life insurance company, ticker LNC, goes dividend on April 9th, paying 42 cents a share for a forward yield of 2.76% with a very super low, supersonic low, 18.97% payout ratio. And they have been increasing that dividend for one year, so says Dividend.com. Going to X on April 9th is OGE Energy, the integrated utility company, paying 40 and a quarter cents per share. 4.91% forward yield, very nice. 74% payout ratio, that's getting up there. Uh, but utility companies tend to have higher payout ratios and consecutive years of dividend increases is seven lucky number years for OGE Energy. Going next on April 12th is American Tower Corp, ticker AMT, paying $1.24 which is a 2.5% hike from $1.21 with a 2.05% forward yield with a payout ratio of 96.94%. Remember, they are a REIT, so that is going to throw the earnings per share payout numbers off, and their consecutive years of increases is nine years. And on April 14th, going X, one of everybody's favorites, including my own, I may use this to motivate me to pick up one more share, is AbV ticker ABBV, the biotech large pharma company, paying $1.30 per share with a 4.87% forward yield, 42% super low payout ratio. They have been increasing that dividend for 49 consecutive years, so says dividend.com, but hold the phone, that's not correct. AbbVie has actually been paying a dividend for about 10 years. They're lumping them in with Abbott Labs, which they did spin off of. But all in all, AbbVie is still one of my favorites and a super, super solid dividend growth company. Last but not least is McGrath Rent Corp, ticker MGRC, paying 43 and a half cents a share, which is a 3.6% dividend hike from 42 cents a share with a 2.17% forward yield, 41% payout ratio for the real estate owner developer company, and they have been increasing that dividend for 27 years. So there you go, there are 12 dividend companies that have some very nice payouts that I've personally hand selected for you out there in the community. So if I've helped you, please help me out with a like and a subscribe. It would be much appreciated. Follow me on Twitter at RustyRam78. Check me out on Instagram at Dapper Dividends. And as always, I love it and I truly mean it. That expertise does come from you in the community. The community is nothing without you. Let's hear what you have to say. We would like to speak to you and I will speak to you in the next video.